already right. We should be live. I got the book. I got a lot of playing cards, a lot of decks. Which, which one am I gonna use? This uh, bicycle panda deck. My favorite B or a Telly Ho. Or am I going to use the seconds? I've been working all week. I think I'm going for the seconds. We got. Aaron J excited for another jam session hanging out and shuffling cards. We got George Anito in the house. Also looking forward to it as it seems a wee this has looked fun. And then we having M1 Grim going in. Also looking forward to it. I guess everything's set up. Ah, I forgot to. I forgot to. I forgot something. <laughs> You're gonna see my face now with no intro trailer. Jesus. Hey there, guys. I, I forgot to uh, to activate the intro. It's a big mistake, you know, because this is a professional live stream, okay? So, just forget what you saw here. Let's let's roll with the intro. <laughs> OG OG, here we are, rolling live again on YouTube. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, boys and girls, to yet another Card Magic Live Jam session. And today we're hitting, we're diving deep into the chapter of sundry slides of the very good book, Expert Card Technique by Jean Hugard and Frederick Bruet. Guys, I have the music again too loud on my headphones. Gotta fix that. Because I don't want to scream at you uh, because I have too much music on my headphones. And then I have to uh, turn this off. Um, let me show you guys uh, for the first time how it looks like what I'm looking at <laughs> when I'm doing the stream. Look at this, look at this, here we go. That, that's what I'm looking at, guys, when I'm, uh, when I'm, uh, when I'm looking, uh, apparently, at you at the camera. I got it all under control. I see exactly who is tuning in. I see all the engagement. I see the chat, and I can uh, fix any issues. Uh, hope they're not uh, uh, being there any today. Anyways, um, we are not, we are not, going through this book chapter by chapter right and last um session last week no it's not uh you know last session we we went to the very end of the book um presentation we looked at the art of presentation and magic you know to get things a little bit into perspective to to see the wider picture the whole picture of what we are involved in here when it comes to card magic as the performing art of staging tricks and illusions right and this was really a blast it was really it was really um wholesome to me because just with this chapter once again the sundry slides you know there's so much material in there and it's easily overwhelming and then it's like kind of you know sometimes even frustrating because um Maybe you know how it feels. I've got a lot on my desk. I've got a lot of moves I'm working on. I've got several tricks I'm working on. I'm trying to routine something here and there, put uh, bits and uh, bit pieces together. And then you, you look into a book like that and then you will find something new, or some, something that is uh, actually quite good and seems to be very important. And you're like, how could I... M how can I miss out on this one? Or you'd be like, Jesus, now I have another thing to practice and to learn um, and this easily gets frustrating so going back to the end of this book and looking at the the whole aspect of actually performing and of how to present your magic and of what it actually means to 
to build a, you know your own stage character your own to become the magician that only you can become right all these techniques they are put into place right and it's really really important for me at this stage of our studies to really point out also to myself you know to to ease the pain a little bit um we don't need to know everything we don't need to know each and every slide and by knowing i mean by having mastered it you know it's good to know um those techniques are available and it's good to know where you can find them and it's always good you know to educate yourselves on the whole subject you know but by reading or by, by watching lecture dvds or whatever but it's also kind of really wise to be relatively selective with what you are actually studying and practicing you know at the end of the day you just have so much time we all just have so much time and maybe um um and, and of course we want to make this this time as productive as possible and not jumping from one thing to another thing you know and in this chapter i was i was confronted um with my lazy ass <laughs> Because we are, we, we find in, in this chapter pretty much, uh, um, what am I doing here? Yeah. Apply some pressure. Apply some pressure. <laughs> Let's control again. Uh, with this, uh, the, um, the spread cull, right? Which is, um, which is a um, technical weapon in magic. It is an absolutely fundamental, but also highly advanced, highly sophisticated sleight of hand technique which comes with a lot of applications um and it on a surface level it seems to be a, a relatively easy operation although if you ever give it a try you will find ah there is much more to it even on a mechanical level than you might believe but then when you take a closer look at this technique you will find that this is actually a really difficult thing to do and we we'll talk about this later um we we'll talk about i, I will um just uh, you know swap through the whole chapter and giving you some thoughts and ideas on the techniques presented here but please keep in mind i'm here um at the edge of my seat as well and i i am um saw you guys uh having a little discussion again on our discord channel um let's let's dive into here and i believe it was um uh it was uh Dallas Taylor asking um, in order to prepare better for the session what um, what techniques I'm planning to um, to to really dive deep into here um, and I, I couldn't I didn't answer to that because I just I was I had again t t extremely busy two weeks um, we renovated our workshop um, where I um, do I uh, create um, beautiful tile murals with my girlfriend and um, since there is this uh, corona thing going down um, our sales dropped to you know to the to to yeah to, to <laughs> they dropped drastically so the the kilns the ceramic ovens they are not f um, on they're not firing the production has calmed down and we took the we took the opportunity uh, just to um to renovate our, our workshop our, our working space um so i i wasn't um i wasn't um uh, catching up on what you guys were um uh, uh, doing on uh, discord and i w i wasn't even at the card table so so much just that you know um, anyways, so um, that is tell us. Um, sorry, I, I, I didn't uh, catch up on this one, but I, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question anyways um, because I wasn't so sure my, myself. Um, but of course, we're going to take a look at the Mexican turnover. We're going to look at this beautiful um, emergency card stabbing, which is a really nice uh, uh, technique. Also, I want to talk again about um, catching a pinky break. We got some options in here, which are pretty nice. And then um, there's the um, uh, basically um, the um, uh, the, br the bridge um, marking the, marking a position with, with a bridge in order to cut to the position, which is also a really bold technique um, because uh, if you play it um, uh, bold enough, you can um, hand out the deck and still be enabled to to find a spectator's card, which is of course uh, a drastic boost in uh, in the effect, um, and uh, then. Of course the spread cull but i'm telling you guys 
I haven't mastered the spread car um, myself. I just uh, walked by this um, incredibly um, important technique, I would say, because there were other things on my list I prioritized. But then again, I, 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 I'm pretty sure. I, I really know. Um, I know. I, I mean, I know the decent. Uh, I don't. I know the um, the basic mechanics of the handling. And I, I could give you some hints and clues how you get um, into uh, practicing this one. Um, and I can tell you what um, what makes this actually a really difficult thing um, to do. Yes, and and then we're going to. And I, I don't know. I haven't looked here at the um, at the comments right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Wit van Wit, you're with us with the meme. Um, I don't know. Um, Dallas Taylor also uh, shared a, a little performance uh, on Discord, and I, I would love to um, watch this performance with you guys uh, here and um, uh, talk a little bit about it, um, giving you my impressions on it. And um, I, I just, uh, I, I just uh, wish Dallas Taylor was here right now to um, to to tell me that, that he he is okay with it. But he shared it anyway on on um, on Discord, so I. There shouldn't be a problem, should there? But maybe he's um, tuning in uh, later, and then we can uh, I can ask him. So um, I'm reading your comments here now. We have uh, Diego de la Vega now. I'm here from Argentina. Awesome, tuning in from Argentina. I hope um, you guys are good over there. Um, what's going on? I don't know. I believe a lot of travel, right? Uh, so um, I hope you're okay. Um, night to uh, strike Kamara. Kamara. Kamar uh, is also in a house. What up, yo? What up, what up? Don Putliner, hi, Marius, hi, Don. Daniel Gruber, Nabend, uh, sprich Deutsch, guten Abend, und willkommen zum Livestream. Nairo Smith, currently I'm culling like hell and I started the cups and balls. That is crazy. This is really cool. Um, so if you can do this, Nairo Smith, you, um, and you're culling like hell and you made progress there, uh, if you wanted to shoot something uh, on it and um, share this on Discord, I'm very curious because as a matter of fact in preparation of this um for this uh, live stream i uh, looked uh, up some tutorials some other sources and books where this is described because um the the version we are confronted here uh, with in a, in a expert car technique it was a little bit confusing i knew the whole, the thing um uh, the the other way around we're going to talk about that uh, Sharif Arif is in the house saying hi, Otmaris. Hi, Sharif. So um, everybody is in the house, and um, we got a, um, a marching route for today's live stream. You guys get a deck of cards out, and then you um, you practice while I'm you know doing my thing, and you're making it quality quality time for yourselves as i'm always saying once again please a little reminder here for everybody um i've got the whole series linked in the info card so if you want to um swip, uh, swap back or forward at any point in time watching this um you can do this um i believe i also linked the uh, the uh, sessions from last year where we walked through the royal road to card magic uh, this is also um now out there for you guys in addition to watch um, all the time and all other links in the info cards um, we got a new patreon by the way I forgot this totally to mention um, uh, let's uh, let's go in here no uh, relationship manager I just want to say um, hi to you um, maybe you're watching right now I don't know um, it's getting crowded you know it's getting crowded um, let me see um, it is um, it is uh, Patrick Shava. Patrick Shava is now uh, an official op maniac, um, also supporting um, the community and this channel with a pledge on uh, Patreon. Uh, this is here, by the way, uh, the Patreon site. Um, Thank you so much, guys, for your support uh, with this uh, medium. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it. And I also started now to um, come up with some extra videos here. This is me explaining um, the... Uh, exp uh, sharing a little bit about my private life, about my past, uh, being a, a magician, just me on a couch, um, taking out my, my beautiful guitars and uh, jamming around a little bit. And... 
I run my Patreon site like this. There are different tiers. This is not guaranteed or exclusive content. This is just for you know to 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 use the site. So you can decide, and every tier unlocks all of them. So if even if you're just a one uh, euro tier, I believe this is the smallest one. You can go on Patreon. You will unlock all of them because um, I'm uh, I'm still. Although you know in these days um, the paywalls go up everywhere. You know I believe in transparency. I believe in um, uh, in free uh, resources, and I believe in um, an open, sharing, supporting community. You know, and uh, uh, I keep that spirit alive as long as possible. <laughs> hopefully, so thank you again, guys, and uh, you know uh, all the links down below. Also, with this uh, out of the way, let's uh, go to the card table here. Get my my uh, seconds here, and this is also a little tip to save some money. Um, the the seconds if you can lay your hands on it on a brick of seconds you will um save uh, quite some money and uh the, those cards are usual actually very working very well for practice and now i'm seeing that my dear mother is in the stream meine liebe mutter ich freue mich dass du zuschaltest ich hoffe du guckst noch ich weiß nicht wann du das kommentar geschrieben hast um, ich hoffe dir geht es gut liebe grüße aus berlin nach köln du bist die beste so a little uh, nice uh, uh, um Uh, sending a little love and flowers to my mother just uh, tuning in uh, from my hometown the city of Colonia and now I'm broadcasting from Berlin here we go so um, this is a chapter again where we and that's why um, I wrote in the title of this video um, don't be random sundry slides you know it's that thrown stuff in here right and um, And uh, this is definitely not a chapter, and the whole book is definitely not um, um, organized or um, built uh, for beginners or even um, um, at least for intermediate to advanced um, players in the field. Um, these are just offers, you know, techniques from the top notch artists um, around that time. So we are talking um, early 19th to mid uh, 19th century um, really big shots um, we have been confronted in the last chapter in the, uh, in the end chapter with uh, big names um, uh, who um, who are still resonating um, today like Cardini for example and um, this stuff you already need to have a, a, a picture uh, of what's going on of what you are aiming at actually as an artist um, you need a, a little bit of experience to know um, to know what you what you go for, what you choose or not, or also to get some inspiration. For a beginner, this is also, of course, a very interesting read. However, uh, don't um, don't get overwhelmed. Um, you don't need definitely all of it. Let's start. Let's start here. Let's 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 go. To, um, slide by slide um, we got the vesting card i have to say nothing about it um i'm uh i i've never used the technique i've never uh, been in the um in uh in the um in the need of it um but of course up at, at to a certain level of performance then uh, this is something you want you want to uh, you, you like deck switches for example um or um you know um getting rid of of stuff in a very bold manner there are techniques you know to to throw things into a, a, a um a net in the west or, or you know um putting a uh, card in a position where you need it or for a um um production of a um of an uh, invisible deck if you want to make a deck appear there there are techniques where you need to go in there and um this is a um uh, this of course uh isn't just a technique where you learn a, 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 a me simple mechanics this is a technique that comes with a whole body movement so you are in the midst of routining something and um that's something you definitely uh, um, practice standing in front of a mirror and basically the whole motion of the body uh, needs to be uh, to needs to be um, working out just like your hands would um, your behavior your motions um, your movements they need to be reasonable um, not to uh, um, catch suspicion right and um, this 
is good to, to get into it. I believe um, I've seen um, there was this magician, this French magician, um, um, Xavier. Xavier Parrot and he disappeared from the surface of the internet at one point and the guy he would um, have a channel on YouTube growing extremely fast like he was out running everybody uh, and he, wa he wasn't uploading on a high frequency every, every one, one medium a month or even less but he would um, you know incorporate like cineastic elements he would like um tell stories with the um with the camera with the with the art of film and um he would also kind of do tutorials in that manner and it was um i remember so inspiring so refreshing from everything else or from many things i've seen so i i had seen so far and um there was a video where he um, uh, where he would west a card to immediately produce it, and it was a very very clever handling. And um, uh, I just remember this right now, you know. So um, w w and of course, you know, it, it, it they show you like a gr grip like this, and then you go, you know, you go into into the vest in a motion like this, right? to maybe clip it there because you have a clipper there or to just immediately produce it whatever you know um and probably from a um classic palm you get into this position very easily just like that look you're here is the, the classic palm you get in a position like that you don't know uh, or in a loose hand like that and then when you come in when you come up you get into this position i don't know don't like this don't like this and then you and then you make something very stressed out and everybody knows nothing is happening right <laughs> not so much my piece of cake i'm more at the point being i'm more of a um uh, uh a lightweight um uh bullfighter if that makes any sense so i like to jump in bash, 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 and jump out you know <laughs> um i don't like to cuddle with the people i like to hit them and dance around you know that's my more, more of my style if you want to do this and this gentleman thing more um and we're gonna also if uh, at the point where um uh um that dallas taylor tunes in we're gonna talk about his um presence in the room while he was performing i liked it very much very inspirational um so crazy challenges is also in the house good afternoon Ot marius how you been good afternoon crazy challenges you are i like right on on, on discord um and you um i know you know a lot of um uh, uh you're you're well read in, in in the art and you um practice uh, you seem to have a lot of um techniques um already kind of um studied um i'd love to uh, hear more or maybe you can give me some inspiration later when we talk about the uh, uh, the the spread call um because no, i'm not 100 percent familiar with this technique and i um I'm just as curious as everybody else, probably, and on Discord and in our community. How do you get this thing really, uh, really down and at your fingertips? And what are the use case scenarios? I know you can um, um, use this even as a force if you want to. You can use it as a card control and, of course, for stacking cards, right? So anyway, West thing. I don't have anything more to say about that. Do you guys have any questions? Want to want to add something? You have any experience? By the way, once again, and I'm always saying this here. Um, or usually um, what I'm saying please take this just as a thought um, as an inspiration as an input for your own thought process for your own train of thoughts um, for your own learning process because I'm uh, um, uh, just reflecting in a really jazzy um, style here just on on uh, these uh, techniques you know um, there's a lot of room for um for learning here also for myself this is this is not 
we are this is all work in pre progress i want you to take it like that you know as an inspiration and uh not just as you know final th thoughts or something right um, we're far away from that at this point right cheer up is in the house saying hi hi cheer up awesome you tuning in then we got mega hulk hogan fan again odd marius i really appreciate this streams thank you for all your work you're very welcome uh Ma mega hulk hogan fan very welcome so um back to the car table now we have another thing. Um, we got the um, the the Singon Tampne Gorge, or how to pronounce it ever. Now, again, look. I'm quite sure from my uh, bottom and um, second dealing um, um, studies that you can get this down. And that at a certain point it uh, uh, might uh, appears much easier than you would reconcile it. But um, this is one of those things. For first glance, it comes with a super high risk here of um, going into this. Now, if you really want to use it for magic, <coughs> you have to eliminate. You want to eliminate the risk, right? And if you just want to use it as a little byplay, as a little, you know spending casual time with your audience why would you want to go into the effort of practicing this now i gave this a little bit of a try with really unsatisfying results um look at my fingernail i don't i have very short fingernails <clears throat> oh, something's wrong with my throat right now what what is going on it feels like i have a hair or something there <clears throat> Now the idea is to go down here and with the nail getting reaching into the cuts to pick up the same same package. Now if you think about this technique, what you would have to do is with a pretty even deck to um, reproduce the same grip with the same amount of pressure to to get it going. And I believe this is possible. From the explanation in the book, it is um, reaching with your hands uh, at, at one side, out here, from the side only. So you would um, really put the palms of the fingers, the, the pressure comes from the side. And then from the other side, the pressure comes from the top of the tip going down. And then you have this little route notion. If you have longer fingernails, you should then be able to reach the cards, which I can't do to be able to pick the same amount of cards out there. Now, this worked, for example, <laughs> without the fingernails even. Now, I think this the thinking of it is really nice, but I have my trouble with it. I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if you... if. I know myself, I, I get carried away um, in a performance situation, I might stress out. And this is something where I would feel like um, putting too much on the table with, with too little effect for it. So I know this is there and maybe there comes a point or a situation where I think I need this now because there's no other way around for creating the effect or something but for now i i don't i don't have the time um to put the the effort of practicing this quite honestly um but maybe that is a very different situation for you just that you know from what i read here it is the same amount of pressure and copying pretty much the same grip pressure comes from the side pressure comes from the top and then it is the it is the motion of the, the the finger bending down and if you once get it going you need of course to make this to create to make to, to make this happen in a manner so that it doesn't look completely stupid so this was even th three cards not fitting however on the other hand and you notice there are these people who just m m decide to master something like this. And quite honestly, if someone would pull this off, <clears throat> I wouldn't even recognize it. I would be very impressed. 
I would I would I I I I would be lying in bed all night long wondering where did he where did he catch the break? <laughs> because I usually work with breaks, catching breaks. But of course, there are also other methods for creating something like this just that you know or probably you know um and this doesn't seem t t to me the easiest method here um, <laughs> um i think crimps are much more effective to create a similar effect however um it is just an offering here right it's good to know that it's there so we have uh Don uh, Putina says you are a true inspiration. Thank you so much, mate. Apply some pressure. Right? We're taking a low price for you here right now. We are applying not so much pressure. Just going easy here. Just giving, you know, um, getting uh, the ins getting get, getting um, a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, kind of kind of a brainstorming situation. Just opening up for new, new technique. Just seeing where this goes. And also, this is at a, at a certain point as a beginner, you should just you know follow the. The, 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 the general march route, you know, laid out in the Royal Road to Card Magic. Um, so basic shuffling, basic cutting techniques, um, th th those very strong tricks that are not too hard to play, that uh, um, uh, get the audience involved so much, that give you as a performer enough time to, to, to um, experience, to, to, to really um, uh, focus in onto the um, experience of performing magic instead of you know being stressed out all the time because there is the past coming there is the past coming or any slide that is um um uh over your skill uh, to, uh, to, too high over your skill level at that point in time right um but then at a certain point um it all gets more um fluent you know you're just uh um uh, yeah. you will Sometimes from a lecture you will just get inspired, which is a lot, which is uh, um, um, so much more than um, you know going through a lecture and just not finding anything uh, there in there that resonates with you. But you, but you, but you sure as hell will not uh, just put one trick or one slide after another uh, on, on in, in your uh, uh, repertoire. It's just not reasonable. It's 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 quite stupid as a matter of fact. It will not get you anywhere, and. Um, in that in that manner, um, I'm, I, I said in the beginning here or uh, in between here um, that you just take what I say as an inspiration, not as uh, you know as the uh, final word or something. Because um, this, what I say, is true for me, but it, it can be um, referencing here to a specific slide, a complete different set situation uh, for you. You know, this this could be the thing that makes a, a difference. Um, uh, for you, right? And how do you know? Of course, uh, at a certain ex level of experience, you get the idea. It's just, it's just, um, it, that's what ba experience basically is, right? Yeah, with one video, you are with us here with the meme. I just keep that. I think it's just like, uh, 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 it just works so well, right? <laughs> So cheer up says today Ben is by his birthday 40% for his performance. Sorry for uh, commercial at Marius. I see. Oh, you know, no worries. No worries. Um, um, uh, this is a great, uh, this is a great deal for, for 40% for, um, uh, it's a offer a birthday offer is a great deal. So Dallas Taylor greeting out Marius greetings, everyone at uh, Dennis. Um, I've just been talking about you. You have shared a performance video. Uh, with um, us on Discord, and I would like to watch this with uh, today, right here, uh, and then talk about it a little bit, if you would agree to that, because I just don't didn't want to do this without your um, uh, uh, permission, pulling this in the public, because right now they are man, it's uh, it's crazy again. It's eleven folks watching, so basically it's it's the community. <laughs> Never mind. So we got Il Ila Aslam, great work, sir. Thank you so much. So, and then we have separa separating the colors um, here in a manner which I also don't like. I don't even want to go in there. That's not my piece of cake. I know there are very different versions. Of course, um, separating the colors uh, for um, for many awesome, uh, uh, really very strong effects. It's a whole, um, it's like the ambitious card in oil and water and um, uh, 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 color um, uh, uh, change. or. Uh, uh, Cards, colors come together, separate each other in a magical or in a uh, uh, um, way that cannot be explained. 
And this is uh, also, um, uh, that's the next thing. Oil and water basically is the next effect I want to um, dive uh, deep into uh, um, studying. I said this before, I'm still, I'm still working on um, Strangers Gallery and on some really fast paced sleight of hand um, uh, uh, tricks. I, I, I just wanted to have mastered before I go into more um, wider um, tricks for um, more interactive performance situations, right? But then the issue of changing the cards becomes extremely important of, of, of stocking the cards, right? So what we're talking about is that I have a completely mixed deck of cards and I want to have the, the red and the uh, card, the red and the black suit separated from each other, right? And there's um, quite some techniques out there doing this. Um, and that's the way how I roll at this point. I will look at all of them. Um, I will think about how I integrate this into my material I've got so far, and then I will choose the um, uh, the, the, the the most fitting, the most suitable um, technique for my needs, and I exclude everything else <laughs> because otherwise, you know, you can spend hours. And I will start with the studies with um, Tamaris version of oil and water, and I will um, study the complete version of Tamaris. I will get this at my fingertips, and from there I will develop my own um, uh, um, my own version of it. Um, and um, of course. Uh, there is another i just remember it's it's called out of this world i believe where where um um this all that the same principle is at stock here so um so i'm really looking forward into this um into this next um chapter of my own personal um progress and magic so and now Let's walk to the table and now it's like give you something um, that we already know. All right. So we've got the situation of setting a key card. And uh, you know, this is a principle which is um, very fundamental in card magic, which um, enables you to do a lot of beautiful tricks, um, which enables you to perform effects without. Um, advanced sleight of hand like the pass or any other card control you don't you wouldn't even necessarily need to know how to um, um, catch a break and control a break because you're working with the key card right so for the key card of course it is absolutely uh, crucial it is the one thing um, that needs to be um, eradicated and that is in any way the spectators uh, catching you glimpsing uh, the card you want to use as a key card right although this is much less of a deal than you would expect it to, to be because when we talked about peaks already I don't know you know in this chapter in the last session um, a mo this move this move alone would do it right so you're in this position you go like this and you pick the card very Innocent. You can, I can even flash the card to you guys, right? Like that. Bang, bang. I got a catch of the card. It's done. Right? So, e easy glimpse. Or what's also a very nice glimpse is this version, right? This one here. Do you see the, 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 um, the b bending the top card like this? You see this. You get a really good um, um, glimpse at the, at the card. Let me see. There, where, there it is. Something like this can be really easy done. Just there, one look, it's it's done. And usually it's when when you when the spectator picks the card, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can do it like <coughs> I'm so sorry. You can do it like this. Six of diamonds, second from the bottom. I shuffle the cards, right? I shuffle my six of diamonds to the top. I don't even have to look at it. I have a spectator pick a card, right? Picks the card, takes the card. Spectator takes the card, seven diamonds, and then um. Uh, I uh, shuffle the card to the bottom. I have the spectator pick the card in, something like this, put it up, up upon there. Done. Very easy, very practical. <clears throat> I 
So, um, something's going on in chat and the camera is overheating. Turn the camera off here. Um, Apply some pressure. So, um, what we got? So, so Dad says, sorry for popping up a, a bit late. How's the stream thus far? Short thing. It's rubbish, but no problem. Oh, no, no, it's not rubbish. No, 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 I, no, 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 it's, it's not right. It's in the contrary. I like that. I like, I liked a lot about it. Um, it's a, it's a funny community says a mega Hulk Hogan fan. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, funny um, and very supportive. I've, I'm really excited about it. This community is extremely supportive and um, we're really passionate about the art form. I'm privileged um, in that behalf. Um, yo, Dallas, and then, by the way, my first name is Dallas. Um, did I did I say anything else? What did I say? Did I did I do a mistake here? I don't know. So she Rob is uh, drinking beer already, like a good German, with Dallas Taylor, like a good American. <laughs> and then we got Patrick Schauer says, "Wish I had my book at work." Uh, uh, yeah, no worries. You don't have it at work. Uh, always, you know, always carry a deck of cards. Always palm a coin, and always have the magic book, right? That's the basic for the novices, yeah? Anyway, so where was I? Um, setting the key card, right? So setting the key card, I got to wait here for the camera and something's wrong with the music again. Let's turn the music on here. Back on. So, and let's see how long are we doing this. We're already in for 34 minutes. I'm talking here again like a crazy dog. We got now a hello from Bangladesh. Murshid is Islam is tuning in. Um, awesome man. Awesome you're tuning in. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. I'm just showing here now um, a very beautiful um, technique from expert uh, card technique setting a key card. Here's the thing. Camera on. Right, I have my cards. I, I show the, I show the, I show to point to another card, and I get an extreme. That's how it looks like. I'm pointing here into uh, to a card the spectator took out of the deck. This is the magician's view. There you see it, right? So let's say you have a spectator pick a card, any card, doesn't matter, and of course. We are always um, f um, forcing, we're, work we're rolling here with the six of spades. We are always trying to force a card when we use the, the spread. So we f uh, have a spectator pick a card and it is the six of spades very well. Now, when we close the spread and I have a tutorial series up and running on my channel, how to catch a pinky break, hey, uh, how to catch a nice flash fourth finger pinky break. It's in the tutorial series, no limits of control, right? But instead of just catching a pinky break here in this scenario, we put, we, we created to get our finger in there. Like really nasty this time, right? Like for the pass, yeah? Like this, really nasty. So we're here and we jam our finger in there. Bang. Square the cards up with the finger in there. Doesn't matter here, like this. Square it up with the finger in here. And now when you turn around to put, 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 put at the cards, you will find that you will have a super awesome look, get a super awesome glimpse at the at the jack of farts at this point. Now, I don't care what they say here in the book because as I as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly what I was gonna do next. Because next, I catch and now here you see the flash, right? The break here. Yeah, I was flashing the break. Be careful with little things like that when you work with the camera. Um, I come from this position, I come and I catch now a flash break into this transposition. And now I would have the spectator replace the card maybe with a dribble, right? So I have to I just go like, you know, come on, put the card right in there. Spectator puts the card in and you dribble the jack of hearts right there on top of it. Super clean, done. Just as a little from me to you. So, <clears throat> spectator chooses a card. In this moment, I catch my break and the card, of course, is not shown and it's on the table. Then you say, take the card, take the card and take a close look at the card and memorize the card. 
right? And the spectator takes a card, memorizes the card. Why do, does that? You um, square up the cards, catch your pinky break, very uh, um, nothing suspicious here. And you say, now let's lose the card deck. And again here, we just have the cards drop down and you put the card in there and you can even have the spectator say stop and you put the rest of the cards on there. That's just like this, super fair, done, right? And now you got your key, you got your key card. And I believe this, um, if, I w if I wouldn't have thought about it and if somebody had pulled it off, pulled it off like this, I would have been fooled. Because at in this position, at this point, I'm expecting a break, right? Uh, that's what I'm expecting. At least I would I would have expected a pass already at this point when I'm looking when I'm watching at uh, at uh, high end performers we go like they know out there they know how to do it that timing micro timing is so strong uh, this is uh, Doc Eason's uh, top change is the, the sickest thing I've I, I I've seen and when you for example see a professional uh, magician with a lot of uh, um, uh, experience performing a top change this thing is just invisible it's just it's it just goes it d disappears just disappears right so very very beautiful way have a spectator pick a card this one here place it on the table and catch you catch your break and say now i want you to, to take a close look at this card C close look at this card take it take a look at this card and that's the most so all you do is just it's just very natural like this he looks at the card and then bang I, I, Jack of Clubs, I believe, I've got here as a key card. No, it was the Queen of Hearts. I already forgot. This is the thing. Man, I'm forgetting the key cards. <laughs> right after glimpsing. Anybody else got the pro Anybody else retarded out there? So. Time to watch the performance by Dallas Taylor. So, let's give you some um, background information, everybody watching here, because uh, Dallas um, wrote about it here. This was very impromptu, and it's a trick I've never done for anyone before. Just learned it a couple days ago and had a nice opportunity to perform it for a friend I haven't seen in a long time. He's the one recording and didn't do and didn't do a super job yeah a super job yeah he was recording <laughs> the table <laughs> my brother and his girlfriend were there too i did a few other tricks but unfortunately this was the only one that was recorded my patter is awful there is so much room for improvement for this but it was really fun and they were quite entertained so overall a very positive experience my friend recorded uh, uh, recording is the four ace guy because i did another ace trick for him earlier and then um we have a lot of we got wit from wit and i like uh, it's crazy challengers and uh, uh giving us some compliments you know very positive feedback so that's uh i've got to turn the music off here for a moment so that's um um, for uh, beginners or even for intermediate um, uh, card magicians or hobbyists, a very, very common, very common situation. So you are at a party or you're at a hangout or a meeting or something, and um, hopefully you got your deck of car cards around. Maybe you show someone a trick which works well, and um, a couple of hours later or half an hour later, uh, a group comes in and says, "We heard that you do magic. Can you do a trick for us?" And there you go. You 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 got your the you, your um, audience just came to you without you doing anything for it, right? The setting um it's 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 very very common right and usually as a beginner and even for the longest time as an intermediate you're doing a couple of tricks um you're not so sure about and uh, the whole thing is extremely exciting and um you um you will be blown away very often how good it actually worked how easy it actually was and you will be um really be inspired and wondering about what you can improve and why didn't you react like this and that and this is uh it's really really um exciting about this art form um but as we learned in the last chapter and we talked about it uh 
the art of presentation, at the end, the goal or the objective of the art form is to build a stage character, which kind of, you know, uh, transcendence throughout the whole performance, throughout your whole career as a performer. And you will be building this character with every performance you do. Um, and maybe um, this character even becomes kind of an alter ego of yourself. So you will have a repertoire of tricks and um, you will have um, your lines that we're working, you will be testing on lines, you will be testing other tricks and then you will put all these things together. And at the very beginning, um, it's a situation like this, um, where you just uh, perform a ace trick to to um, to company of people, usually in a, um, in a like family or friends surrounding next step is like, party of a friend to friends of a friend and something like this right let me pull this up let's we watch this whole thing through and then um i will um i will um share my thoughts and maybe you guys can also um uh, add something here let's see if i can um make this bigger uh, this is not going gonna get any bigger here how do i do this wait can i do it like this yeah, 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 yeah. Don't want to cut anything off just like that. That's as big as I can go. And now I can not press the play button. This is um, I press the play button and then I make it bigger. All right. All right. Well, you're my four ace guy. So I'm going to do another four ace trick. Four ace, sir. Yeah. So we got lace and diamond. I see what the cameraman is recording. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go and find the other, <laughs> the other four aces. The other four, the other three. The other three. Okay, I was like, that. <laughs> sneaky, oh, sneaky little trick right. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your fifth go? <laughs> Thanks for the catch. All right, so we got long, the ace of hearts, and the ace of spades. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Better. Yeah. Adios. Good to see you, Adios. Good to see you again. You too. Have a good night, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Zooming in on those hands, baby. Zooming in on those hands. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the four aces. So we'll flip these over. I'm going to make four piles with these aces. One, two, three, four. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Adios. Now, we've got the four aces. I'm going to put some uh, small packets on each of them. Okay, we'll do it like this. Uh, uh, like that. Teddy, <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> so, where we stand, we got four packets with each packet having an ace on the bottom. They can. Alright? So, I'll put them back. Four aces. Something back. All right. Now my trick, because the aces are very magical. <clears throat> That's why there's a lot of four ace tricks. They always kind of like to group together. So if we just give it a little bit of time, we're talking. This is called time misdirection. I give it some action. Snap. And I'll s they all come together, face up. You motherfucker. In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you watch that in slow motion? So, that was it. First of all, turning the music back on. We're gonna do another boring strip. Boring. The 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 performance situation, right? Is um. Uh, just as as you would expect in the close-up set. Now um, there's a huge table between the performer and the audience. This is kind of an, uh, can be um, a benefit. Brings of course distance to the whole thing, so you're standing far away, but it can also give you a little feel of security. Now you have a situation where you have um, a spectator pretty much to the right, and you even have somebody walking in the back right so this is a full full uh, throttle um real life uh, close-up um performance situation you know um i like how um uh, dallas um, um 
as soon as the cameraman uh, goes down here is um, f uh, comes around uh, really centered and um, really calm um, so I don't get any vibes of stress or nerves. Um, this is already a really, really good thing. This is just like, if you have this settled, I don't know, it, I, if you, if, do you have any uh, performance experience? Are you a teacher? You have no problem talking for people in front of people. Um, uh, are you in natural arts, uh, arts? So you have a good... Um, um, uh, uh, recognition of the room and you are secure you have a high um level of self-security um all of that helps you know performer is centered uh, the, you are calm and you are you are um you are um focused right that's that's the that's the solid thing that's whatever you do that needs you need to be like centered because you are the puppet player because your character that's somebody else now that is missing here um uh quite a lot but that's that's uh that's absolutely not a problem that doesn't diminish uh, um uh the the effort of actually going out there and getting into this position because you got to go there and then you know gain the experience that's really the hardest step uh just before i say anything else here I've I've been I've perf been performing in situations like that much worse. I've been to situations where I complete, completely lost my nerves and it was a really terrible um, experience for myself. And I do not have the impression that this person right now is experiencing something negative or is, is stressed out about about what he's doing. Oh, music is a bit loud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. So we got a centered character, we centered dude here, no stress, cool vibes. Um, that's really good. And uh, and this is of course the that's the that's the that's the foundation. That's that's the anchor in the storm. And we have them at the end where all the dirty work is done. He's he, he gets a little bit into the into the magician's role. Um, he starts this bullshit talking about uh, the aces are magical and we do a little um, thing here and we wait and we talk you know this is the I call it the bullshit section you know and um, you need to expand the bullshit section you know basically the whole your whole you know your the whole performance needs to be kind of a bull bullshit section um, so what I mean by that is like you are um, n not just you're not just performing another trick you know this is a miracle what you're doing because you're a miracle a wonder worker and um, this is how you introduce the people and you say as you and you could do many entries right um, like um, as I've just shown my friend that um, uh, uh, the aces are out of control always in my hands because I'm just start, started studying magic and my, I, I don't have the magical powers so you know but bullshit like this you enter and people uh, uh, tend to enjoy something like this uh, tremendously it's just really good um, and you can you know you just have to find what is the right dose for you um, and uh, because of, of course you can also overdose something like this. Um, now, what I liked also is at the point where you deal around the cards, Dallas. You're using the whole table. It's a huge table, so you don't make a, you, you you create a relatively big window of opportunity here. Uh, not window of opportunity. Uh, 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 um, side. I I, I, I like this. Um, you have these. Um, these cards, this big table, you use the table and um, this helps everybody to really see it. And compared now, and because it's a very simple um, um, plot, um, people can follow along. So you don't need to necessarily um, explain every step, although this sometimes can be helpful and also useful um, when, when Imagine now there was there was even louder music and much more party. You know, you would nearly <coughs> sometimes need to hammer what's happening in the heads of the people. This would be another extreme situation because the people are just you know distracted from all sides. But in this scenario, it seems like that the people are focused. They're interested in in this, and of course, the most important um, message you need to transmit at this point, you need to make them remember, is that the aces were lying um, at the bottom. So you're dealing down the aces, right? 
and then you put different packages upon there. Now I'm I'm just I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not showing you the table, but you see this, right? Different packages go on the aces. Um, let me show you this one more time, just to uh, recap the situation. Um, so you deal, you use the whole table, which is great, you know, this is great. You make it, you play it, you, you, that's the, the thing. And then you go with the packages, right? And here at this point, you want to, you want to, and you did this, uh, of course, when you said that this is the situation where we are, you recap at a certain point. But here you can go like, with, you can use this, like the situation is working. Say stop here, please say stop. I don't know how the setup you actually were playing. If you can, uh, if you are in this situation and able to have people also make a choice, I would integrate this definitely. So, right, and then you have this packages going down on all the aces, right? And now when you bring the eight, when you bring them back together again, this gets really, this is the aces are lost completely in the deck. You know, that's, that's what needs to be right there. Loved it very much. Um, simple to follow. You played it already big. Why not just put one more layer of kind of su some some uh, story over there? I know you said you just uh, performed this for the first time, so you you haven't thought about anything probably. But never mind. You know this is just uh, just go go with the right. Just make some shit up, right? Because you you know. You, you have you will have to do it anyway why not why not in front of everybody nobody really you know it's sometimes uh, they are the impromptu um uh, pattern or chit chat or crazy thing that comes out especially when we are you know getting first of all into the whole material material into the whole situation uh, it is uh, you can do not you just can win with it instead of just dealing silently the cards and then they say look now we have all the aces down right uh, the other thing is more exciting and then the other thing I wanted to say about this uh, specific performance if you have a chance to integrate your audience to, to have them participate on the magic by choices do it do it for example, also, or um, another thing that comes to mind, when you decide for tricks, building a routine, you know, and once again, never mind, you just learned it, you performed it, there's nothing wrong about it. Yeah, that's, you done well, and it's a great experience to learn. I'm just taking it from here just to, 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 um, to, uh, to learn. What, what can be approved or what, what, what is a smart choice um, after the experience has been made and shared. Thank you so much, by the way, for, for sharing this. That's brave and that's bold. You're rocking awesome. I love the poker player's picnics, you know, from a Royal Road to Card Magic so much because you are, have a similar effect, but the thing is much stronger because you end up also with four piles, but the aces are at four different places with the spectators cutting the cards. And this is freaking impossible, right? So in a situation like this, I would always go for something like the poker player's picnic to get the people really involved instead of, you know, most of it just happening from one to another from 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 it's just a two-point thing you know the cards the aces get lost and then they show up at one in a in a pack faced upwards in the deck right it's very it's 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 it's, it's from the whole setup whole the whole working the same thing the other one has just much more impact this is something however you can really, you know, throw in quickly just to throw in one more effect. If you're in a, if you're going for a four ace routine, right? It was really nice to go to go through something like that relatively fast to show like this is what the aces are doing. Now let's let let let's uh, let yeah, don't believe me. Sh I show you, and then you go for a poker player's picnic. So that's that, then then this, this becomes really reasonable because now you have a situation where you have the aces lost in the deck showing at um, one spot in a team and then you have the aces showing um, on you know they they at they started at the bottom they ended in one spot and then they started anywhere 
in the deck and they start at the top, right? So, and these pictures, these plot lines of the tricks, this is what gets the magic rolling. And if we are staying in one family of effects, the um, transitions from one effect to another, from one trick to another. And by the way, I've, I'm getting the, the, the feeling the longer we are, we are um, going through the series here um, that, we, that we should define the term, the difference between trick, effect and routine. <laughs> Have I thought about it? That we very often use this almost a synonym, but there are a slight difference. Like the effect is basically quite what you, what it says. It is just that what the illusion describes, and that would be a card disappears and appears at an impossible location. A card that has been lost gets fined. A card gets predicted. A card transforms. A card. Um, teleports and so on those are the effects now the tricks and the effects they are achieved with different methods every effect has a lot of different methods you know and the combination between the methods to create a certain row of effects or a certain effect it's usually called a trick and a trick very often when we learn them from books comes already with a routine that is um, it already is um, one coherent flow of motion that is more or less reasonable and the more reasonable it is the better the trick the less suspicion the um, motions and movements and actions of the performer um, get but of course, when we say a routine, we usually speak about a connection of um, or a um, uh, uh, of, of several tricks, of a bunch of tricks put together, and that is a routine, which then will be can be built into an act where you have like a couple of routines built together, right? Um, but then again the term routine stands for the whole thing and depending on what type of performer you are you can have a routine that just uh, you know that you will repeat just the same way over and over and over and over and over again every time you perform it with only slightly nuances and timing compared to a relatively free performance style where you go, go jazzing into the situation you know and then you go like you got you're, you're with the aces right now let's try this i just read this i throw it in there let's see how this goes and you know it's that's a different approach also so um apply some apply pressure. pressure so naira smith is uh uh with the deck coins my beloved rubber band so uh, naira smith is uh widening his repertoire while um uh, why we are progressing with uh, with the uh, lecture and the, the uh, read of uh, expert car technique. Um, Crazy Channel is right. Yeah, like I mentioned to him, I also like the fact that he's performing a simple trick that even though there are interruptions, people can still follow and be amazed rather than a long math trick. Exactly. This is really um, this is really true, and we, we had we talked about this very often. Simplicity is the key to success in magic. You know, it, it's make it as simple for yourselves as possible because in a situation like this, you will deal with a lot of stress, and some cope better than others, and then also your um, spectators they um, they are, um, need to f to f follow along, and if you walk a widely roady pass in, in a situation like that, say it's a party, there's a little bit more going on, you will lose everybody really fast, right? And um, so you you need to have, to, you, you need to, the plot of the trick needs to be super easy, right? And you, your pattern needs to be according to the plot, relatively um, idiotic, right? Um, kind of interest, needs to catch the interest of your audience, right? So, but um, that, uh, Dallas Taylor, once again, all of what I'm saying here is just really, it's, uh, it's nothing to put you down. I really like this. I'm just doing this because I was inspired by this performance. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for the next time. I'm going out doing something like this, seeing how it goes. 
You can never be safe. I love this really much. Um, there was one more thing um, that that I was thinking because I just I, I lost my train of thoughts here. Right. Um, at the mo that was really that was really something here. At the moment. At the moment where um, where you uh, turn the cards over, the camera is full on there, and I thought this was a very convincing moment, right? So I don't know the specific the specific workings of this trick. Um, And I don't want to go into detail here what your hand working is. I thought your hand working was working well with the with the body, but you were a little bit in the open because you you weren't doing so much. And there was a, a one a really fast um, uh, cut I remember, which I um, would recommend doing slower next time. Um, but the the situation where you um, turn the aces over basically, you you collect the aces and. Uh, and you have them on top, right? The aces are up. At least you see one ace, and then you turn them over, right? That was very convincing. That was a very strong moment. This really sells uh, them aces being on the top as them aces going down, right? So I don't know what what version you are going for here. I'm just uh, assuming you are going for the brutal um, sleight of hand version. Four aces right there impromptu, nothing else in the game, right? <coughs> and um, and that was really nice. And when you have a moment like this, you want everybody to look at it, right? A moment like this, and even if it's a it's if it's a, 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 a dribble or a quarter or whatever, a moment like this where you say we have those aces here. And we turn them aces around. That was four cards, right? And I do this again. I have those. I have those cards here, and I'm turning them around because I'm doing the turning around motion anyway. And I do. I want them to see that. Now it's the four cards just turned around. Then I deal them. Very dang dang. That that really sells the illusion. Then even stronger. But then when you have to make the shift, and that is. In this moment here, where you collect the cards, let's take a look at this for a second here. No, we're done here already. No, that's absolutely fair. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That's absolutely fair. This is me thinking as a magician, right? That was me just thinking as a mission. It's absolutely fair. You you got the cards and you just go for go for one card, right? Bang! There you go. That's fair, fair, fair. No problem with that. No problem with that. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Currently, we got twelve folks watching, guys. I'm having a great time. Oh, I hope you're having a great time too. Uh, we are about one hour now, fifty-nine minutes and fifty. Nine seconds. That's right. <laughs> so um, we just went into one uh, position here. That was the um, that was the, uh, the 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 peak for the key card. So let's go for this um, um, uh, emergency card stabbing. That is a nice one. That is a nice one. Emergency card stabbing. Turning the camera back on. Going to the card table. Having a cup of tea and a little wave. By the way, I I, I, I um upped my my vaping game. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> I'm so I'm so crazy.
That's right, we do that in the sessions, she Rob. Dallas Taylor said, is that a dirty, dirty setup at the beginning? I'm guessing. <clears throat> and then, um, she Rob, right, this, this is what we want to do in the Otmanic session. Yeah, we're, we're, we are in an Otmanic session basically right now. <laughs> So, um, what is the situation here, right? So, um, we need any card as a marker card, a card that, 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 that we mark. And then we have a card that is uh, lost in the deck. We say we have the three of spades here, right? The three of spades, we lose it in the deck. Um, and then we have our marker card and we place it by intuition somewhere right there in the deck right just like that and then when we pull it out just like that we will find that we have cut to the three of spades something like this done this for the third or second time let's try this again I'm here with the dribble. We talked about the dribble uh, before. We have our marker card. It doesn't really matter. So we dribble the cards. We have a spectator pick a card. It is the three of spades again. Damn, I'm good. Now I dribble. I catch a break. Got a nice um, pinky break, right? The pinky break, guys. I've got an in-depth tutorial up and running on all matters of the pinky break. Now you see here... Uh, this little gap and everybody seems to be freaking out about it i never cared about it i never have that troubles with it because you usually don't look at the cards like this you hold the deck like this and there is no there's is, there's no worries about it right so we go for the thumb ruffle and all we got to do is when we go with the thumb ruffle and we have a spectator stop us we need to play it in a manner that we come underneath the break right so the break is about here and here's with the thumb ruffle. Now we put the, the spectator puts the marker card in. And now when we lift our hand upwards like this, we catch the break with our, with our um, thumb at the right end. We push that whole package up, align it here. We come and then we separate the package by pulling this out, right? Already looks as if I separated the package of this card, but I'm actually pulling the eight of clubs the marker card here out where it was put in so you got to be careful with this and i would do it like this then i would rotate like this and i get in this position vanishing the deck oh where's the deck <laughs> in this position all right um like there so i would go like this to to, to really indicate that th this this happened and then i would show it like this nice little thing which can be used as um, a uh, card production. So we have a spectator find the finding this. One spectator picks a card. Here, take this card, spectator one, as a marker. Spectator two, say stop at least at any point when I dribble the card. Spectator says stop. Please memorize the card. Just <laughs> Damn, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> three of spades. I don't even know how many spades I got in the uh, three of spades I got in this deck. Um, we um, catch the break at a, as a performer. We say, right, yeah, don't tell, don't tell the other spectator. Now, other spectator, please say stop here when I riffle the cover once again. Stop right there. Wonderful. Place the card in there, right there. Look at this. Now you selected any card out of the deck, right? And you put the thing in any card. Let's see where you put this one in. Here we go, and it is. Is it your card? Yes, and the one guy freaks completely out. Or at this point, you say, "Tell, tell her, tell her what your card was," and he says it was a tree of spades. There you go, bang! Here you got a little tiny trick out of this book. It is not even, it is not even really difficult. What do you think about that one? I just thought how I know I, when I saw it, say, can I use it as a force? How, how do I use it? They use it here in a scenario which I think is uh, is not. It's what happens if you've lost a card. Maybe you know it's there in a package of five. So locate the five cards and then you give it a try or something like this. Which is, uh, which is, uh, I skipped also this part here. The, um, the five card a quibble. Um, I believe you can use this. Um, it is kind of an advanced magician's choice, which enables you to, to find a card out of five. 
I want to go a little. I want to rush through here a little bit to go to come to the for the real gimmick. And I like this one. This is just, mwah, mwah. I love it very much. Right. So once co and of course you can you can uh, go for uh, for any variation here with the with the you just need to get you just need to get a. Uh, a, a, a four finger four finger flash break right that's all you need to get once you, you're there you can do this and then you can of course um do it with um have a spectator pick a card just memorize the card right and then uh you can use the spectator card you can use the the fan also wreck to get your break above the card and you have the marker card for the other person and then you play the same thing. I just, I just uh, give this a try here to to see if it's working like this. Get it going. Two of clubs, boys. We have our marker card. The three of spades. This time we have a spectator. Uh, Selected card. Two of spades. With three of spades. Two of spades. This confusing. And then you can use this with the Charlier card. This is also a nice version. Two of spades goes in the deck, right? Two of spades catching the break. Having this. I lost. No, no, I didn't lose it. <laughs> Doing this again. Does the three of spades find the two of spades? Let's check it out. Here we go. It does. It does. Works all the time, right? And you can, of course, get a break with the overhand shuffle. Have a spectator pick a card, shuffle the card, right? Or have him say stop right there. Three of hearts, wonderful. Shuffle the cards exaggerating here so that you can see i'm in jogging catching my break got it again i have the marker card the seven of hearts does the seven of heart find the tree of hearts let's find this out here we go and that is done very nice just uh, for a little practice round here it's a very neat thing and this is one of these things called um, emergency card stabbing at page 120 of expert card technique something it is from what you need to it is something that um, is very, very, very easy once you've n learned how to um, catch a fourth finger flash break, which is on the way anyway, which you need. It's a fundamental technique. You cannot get around. So if you once learned that to use this technique, it's a piece of cake and you have a little fun thing you can do all the time just there in between, I, I would say. Um, love this very much. Music is off again. Let's turn the music on again. Now, there comes the drop control. The drop control is another technique in the book I'm having my issues with, just as well as the single card bridge. No, no, uh, the tap. Drop control and tap, because I, I, I've decided long time ago for other techniques uh, that are working well for me. So um, basically the issue they have here is that when you when you have a um, card um, selected and you dribble over it again and you want to catch a break, um, some have issues with it. I'm for me the classic methods uh now i actually lost the card let's see so we got the ace of di um, diamonds here i out jog a little bit and i get to sketch a break and i'm done i'm satisfied with it right and the and the ex and then from there i can do whatever i want with the card i can force the card maybe ace of diamonds and also of course you know from there you can just go into the that was a really bad performance let's do this one more time you know so i have the um ace of diamonds and then i just you know dribble over there and i just go immediately into a pass and a dribble pass and under cover of the whole situation under cover of misdirection this works really well with me now what they are suggesting here is that you catch a break over the card and you catch a you catch i don't know a break um five or six or four cards depending on what you want to do again so you're holding three breaks uh two breaks looks something like this right <laughs> and now you have cards drop down right 
Now you have the spectator's card go in there, and then you have another bunch of cards drop down there, just like that, and then the card is lost, sa satisfyingly lost, as they put it, and then you just put the other cards on top of there, catching a break. And then you're in the same situation, um, need, need, need to control the cards. However, you have um, um, a stock on top of the card, whatever it is, right? So the, 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 um, the, the, the drop control is, um, uh, I, I would go straight forward, a, a dribble and um, catching the break uh, with, with an in-jog. Because the whole um, field of... Um, Catching breaks with in jogs. If you once learned the principle and you got it, it's it's really it's really relative. It's re relatively easy to um, incorporate or add different techniques on it, like 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 the like the fan, like the thumb fan, or, or the dribble, right? Or the, even the Charlie cut. All of these techniques in case you want to catch up on are available on my channel on my youtube page um in the tutorial series um no limits of control now we have the tab and reading this i had huge problems understanding it of how to hold the cards but basically you're you're in a situation some, somehow in a situation like this where you where you put the card in and then by tabbing against it you you you're creating an out shock and then somehow i don't know throughout the rotation transferring transferring the deck how, how was it and then i don't know catching the break at one point now this was really awkward the other way around i really didn't understand how i how, how i was a, how I, how i was meant to hold the cards they say fa fa they say horizontal um back of the hands to the cards and um fa face of the cards to me or something i didn't really get it and i didn't bother because I always working from the top with a thumb riffle in, in, in my little system right there. And if I want to catch a break here, I just put the card in there. Now you saw me flashing and that's really bad. So let's do this once again. So once again, I'm in a situation and I put the card in just like that. And the card is lost in the deck. And um, spectators, I've, ne I've never, there was never any issue with it. Of course, I'm, I'm holding here a break. And this is... Uh, um, in, this works for me in a system where I'm just um, using the same technique basically to catch a break and to do other uh, dirty work, right? Um, so I I didn't didn't like the idea of holding the card and likewise does does to come from the side um, too unnatural for me um, the in the way I'm I've I've, I've the way I've conditioned myself you know so i would just go for a break just like that right in there and the card is uh, lost in the deck right and then i use whatever technique i want to use to to control the card um even even if it's something uh, simple like a um, double undercut um i do this once here because there is no simple in magic there is easier um apply some apply. pressure but you've got to make everything work in your hands and this always requires practice right now i also would um or want to skip here the uh, whole area of bending the cards so marking the deck with bridges because we have so much ahead of us in this chapter, right? However, the alternative version of the glide is also something that is um, quite um, quite tasty, I would say, right? So we have a um, situation where we create something like this in the book, a side rock, and we talked about this already for this pretty technique here to catch a little break, yeah? for doing all the crazy things and basically you can do this also with the other hand so now you you create the side jog here and then you can um glide the cards from the side you know instead of going into this position where you would go with the glide like this and pull the cards out right do i have to say anything more 
about this technique because that is, I, I believe I don't have a tutorial up and running on the glide. Oh, it's a new, t it's a tutorial I can do, which, uh, <laughs> which will be varied by the algorithm. <laughs> As the glide. So let me show you. I've turned the camera off again. Um, so the glide, um, if you count from the deal, would be like this. One, two, and three. What we got? We got 10 of clubs at the bottom. Okay, so no, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. We have um we 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 have a um mm, let's try it like this. Let's oh let's let's do a little bit of um practice here i haven't done this once so for so long on the table here i added so much four of diamonds so where where is it so a four of diamonds do i do i still have it under control that was really bad now it's on top right but I, do i want to have it on top um so i got the ace of diamonds right i place it in here and um, i would go like this and then I have it where I want to have it, right? So the Ace of Diamonds. And then we say, can you guess where the Ace of Diamonds is? So I have to transfer the cards and we go one, you say at fifth position, two, three, four, five from the bottom is the Ace of Diamonds. That's pretty amazing. Whoa, whoa. Or we have the Ace of Diamonds or we have any other card. Let's see. Just want to practice this move. I can't do this uh, uh, properly. Um, uh, to be quite honest here, I'm really not satisfied with this one. <laughs> uh, Got to work on this sucker. So, let's see. Five of spades right there in the center of the back deck, like, <laughs> and then you and uh, so and then we we would be like this, right? I I I would no. I would come from here like this. This is how it would look like from the side. So go. Okay, one, two. Three, four, five, six. It's at the seventh position. I know it. Seventh position, the five of spades, right? Thus, Taylor said last night my bro busted me on the glide. Yeah, well, you was ashamed. Don't worry, man. Usually, um, it is not, sometimes it's not so much, first of all, if you perform for friends, for friends and you maybe have a little bit of com competition in your friendship, they will look, you know, with eagle eyes and they maybe even, you know, try to get ahead of you and um, secretly watch the live streams because probably you talked about them. So they know the secrets and then just bust you and I don't tell you, you know, just to make you feel bad. Maybe that's it. <laughs> or... Um, uh, more often it's not so much that you are flashing it's that you are not giving it enough cover with mis misdirection and that you're still in a um uh on a skill level where when you do the dirty thing your all your attention goes there right and then then of course when your attention is there then the attention is there and even if they don't really know the slide they will go like i know that you do something there right and then you have the same situation uh, situation basically so so a um uh, a move like that needs to be embedded and covered with misdirection. Not in the sense that it doesn't mean that you um, that they don't pe that the people don't look at it, but that it that the whole motion and what you're doing makes sense and it's not questions by the audience, right? Um, Apply some pressure. The, uh, the magazine move comes back to haunt you. Uh, it's actually quite a useful move once you can get the grip right. You mean this? Uh, the, the, yeah, 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 that's exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you're following, man. You're really following. Right? Like, this move is like, what the fuck? I, I, I remember I got completely busted over this sucker. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, man. It's so true. <laughs> uh, for me, are the undercut a problem, uh, g -Rob, Because I have a lot of uh, uh, Bavarian card gamers around and they don't know why somebody do an undercut. Yeah, shuffle in the overhand and everything is fine. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, the Bavarians don't know the undercut. Yeah. Mm. Well, then try the um, try the um, simple triple table cut. 
I've also got a tutorial in the series, simple triple table cut. So if they, so we are in a situation, just to help you out here for a sec, we're in a situation, you have an, at any point here, you got the nine of uh, uh, diamonds here and you ca catch a break. For, um, think about it, they don't know anything about a break. You just give it a little bit of, t of time, right? And, um, and then you just um, uh, you drop the cards to the table and then you just uh, do this one and you got it to the top, right? And you can do this in an offbeat, or um, you do this in a moment where you say, "I oh, you know," and then it's just you know what we, what we next thing we do. So you use this to go into the into the into the flow, right? That's a that's a possibility with this thing. Or don't do a double undercut. Just do a simple one undercut in this manner. So where you just talk with the people and you just separate your hands and you shift the packages. Do the do the I call it the uh, the breathing path pass the breathing path uh, because uh, uh, you will realize that people don't actually care if if there is no reason to care about it um, people even don't care if there is a reason to care <laughs> people only care if they have an interest and that is uh, um, to bust you out of envy out of just pure sadistic joy out of um, self uh, insecurity um, or um, out of honest curiosity because they they are really they really follow along and if something doesn't make sense and add, adds up they start to wonder which is natural right the double undercut still haunts me <laughs> um yeah admire uh, is a spy telling your friends what movie you has been teaching for them to bust you <laughs> This would this would be a major major league dick move. I'm actually selling this. <laughs> my, my website is called uh, um, embarrass you, embarrassyourfriends.net. <laughs> Apply some pressure. One positive note else, I, I also did three cuts across and it was a huge success. Amazing, dude, amazing. I wish to have seen a recording of the three cuts across. Awesome. That is awesome. So Chirup is now uh, crying for a, get, get a little nervous breakdown here. I don't know why. Keep calm, everybody. We are going, we are f uh, going on. The new glide, so we know it now. <clears throat> So we got then the transfer thumb count break. Do I want to get in there? Yes, for a little bit. Now, but when I prepared myself for tonight's session, here's the thing about this, this sucker. This is something, this is uh, very essential, very basic. You know all these tricks where you have to, and probably the trick we just analyzed a little bit by uh, Dallas Taylor performed for his uh, Francis, uh, where you, you, you got to catch a break underneath four or five or three cards. And usually um, it, it's been taught in books to um, count the cards out, to, to say something with the cards, bring them back, and then you get your break, right? That is uh, fair enough, works, uh, stood the test of time, no worries about this. Um, um, you don't need to bother with the pinky count, but of course you can go for this one, which is a technique I, 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 I have my issues with. But you can come from the top side, so we have uh, like say four cards here, and the the challenge is to transfer the break here um, to to the inner side. So you, oh man, the angle. So you can get the break here, right? And as soon as I got the break there, and I come now to the top here again with my thumb at the left, and I push downwards, you will see the, the, the cards jump up here. And this is where I put my pinky in. And then I get a nice pinky break, four finger flash break, underneath as many cards I, I shuffle down here. That's the technique described here. Now the, the, the trouble with this one is from the mechanics from the from what is happening this uh it makes perfectly sense right so we count a bunch of cards at the outer corner or we transfer the break and here it already gets tricky right there from from the from this 
section really on top of the flesh of the thumb so that we have a break nice break and this corner and now i come around here again to push it up to make it jump up here so i got, I'm, I'm i'm working around the whole deck right now you can do this in a split second you can do this gotta turn the camera off again god damn it um you can work this in a uh in, in a short shortest moment of time and of course you can learn this to to do this um with not looking at the card just when you talk with the people you go through this and it's really not even this this, this rotation this uh, uh break here count here break here push there catch break here right so it's one two three four this just goes like that very easy you can practice this but the tricky thing about it it is super delicate it is something where the balance of the cards in the hand and where you 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 know the hot the, the the pressure points jesus the pressure points w w here and the the right you know position of the pain all of this super delicate stuff becomes really relevant so this is again one of these moves um really really useful i would even say i would even say essential but it's a long way to get this really down really neat um so first the thumb riffle getting there right and then the break getting the break here as next step you will find this is already a little bit of a challenge and the harder it gets you know that you you don't have so much micro um uh, control um over your fingers and all the next step you will find this is already a little bit of a challenge and the harder it gets you know that you you don't have so much micro um a control i was gone guys i was i didn't even know how long i was talking i'm back i don't know if you realize this i've, I've i'm just now i have a time gap of i don't know f uh five minutes or shit or three minutes or something and I'm, I'm so confused right now i was talking i see i'm not streaming anymore so i stop it I, I i just can't get the engines running again now i got the engines running again and i, I see the i see the replay and in the replay so what you see it's there is no there's the time that i just experienced it's just gone in the day it's just disappeared this is freaking it's happening again Okay, I'm back again. It just happened again, man. It just freaking happened again. Now I'm I don't know what is happening here. I'm so I'm so Jesus. This is freaking quantum skipping, right? This is just I I this is I'm you know when I lose control over my magical powers, shit gets really dangerous. You know, it's really like you know, I'm I'm afraid that one day I'm just making myself a nice tostada and the next thing I know I beep myself into another freaking dimension. I just have to learn to control my powers. That's top priority. <laughs> so cheer up. Thank you so much for the super chat. That is freaking bollocks, man. Thank you so much. Amazing. Um, I guess you've been happy with the, um, with, with, uh, with the, the stream so far <laughs> but do it well thanks three seconds across is so strong do it well um isn't much easier to do the pinky count instead i'd like to hear your objection against the pinky count it's just not my piece of cake quite honestly um i'm working with the thumb the pinky count is a technique that um uh that is just i i don't get it get it groovy in the flow in my, in my flow uh with the cards it's just uh never there's no objections against it if you if you got if the pinky count works for you for your workings with the cards go for it you can do absolutely no worries about for me i never i never just uh i never just ah jesus the the the, the, 
dropping here again, you know? The, the, the pinky cow never got me where I was like... You can do it, you know, I... Like, yes, I'm... I'm in my, in my in, I'm focusing here mainly on uh, real life performance situations, like in a rough setting, just like out there and really performing magic. And um, and the pinky count is something really nice when it comes for a suit when 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 we're dealing about like a camera burning and a super clean handling, a super clean you know, uh, go you know every everybody's burning their hands all the time. But you know, when in a real life performance i need four break on a four cards it's just good like i got the cards here i catch my break while i talk with the people and it's done i'm good right quantum skipping yeah i refreshed the page and you were back just stopped a few for seconds here yeah, for me it was a longer time it doesn't matter we're back on track quantum skipping. yeah it's cutting out uh, every so often Admiris is so powerful he stops time all yeah, right Uh, danke Tim für dich. Ja, Chiro, uh, vielen Dank nochmal ja, für den super chat. See you announced uh, your website embraces your friends. Net, and now we are all trying to get in and get, get got too much traffic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think the fake account is good, but it's easy to make a look real tense and unnatural. But I agree, if it fits uh, you, then why not? Mein Kleiner hat heute Geburtstag und ich bin einfach nur happy, was du machst. Danke. Chiro, gerne geschehen. Super, freue mich. Uh, Mujina, my worry about the thumb count is that the count happens at the front of the deck towards the spectator. Yes, I agree completely. And um, this is just, um, uh, this was just, uh, we are going through the book here. I'm not advocating for this technique. It's just the technique that, um, uh, that, uh, it's, it's good to know, comes in handy. And, ha and if you, you know, Yeah, I don't know. It's I don't. I I go for I would go for another solution, um, and it's quite a workaround. And the pinky count maybe is a solution. I don't even know. This is really quite, this was published 1940. Uh, where is the first publication of the pinky count? I would know. Maybe this is like that. The, they're probably uh, that's the answer to this thing. You know, saying like yeah, well you count the cards on top and so on. But once again. Um, here's the thing, Mojit. Um, when we talk in a real life performance situation and you're in a situation where you count the cards like this, right? You wouldn't, yeah, right now I'm counting the cards and you don't see it. I'm ruffling through the whole deck and now you see the thumb coming up here, right? So I'm going, I'm talking to you. I'm going one, two, three, four, five, whatever I got. And I got this in position. And, uh, when we come back to the cards and I'm pointing to something else, I'm, I'm doing the move to get my, so I could do the pinky count at the same time talking to you, counting the cards with the pinky if I got it there. And maybe this is a better option there. The the anything what I want to say is the um the, the don't think in that manner. The spectators are not always looking at your hands and looking at the cards. They actually do look at the cards. They should look at the cards only if you want to, them to look at the cards. You know, and the chat. The actual challenge is to get to gain control over um to the um, um attention of your audience. The audience management. It's much more important than uh uh and get and gets more and more important right and once again i'm talking about real life performance situations without a camera team sh shooting over your shoulder or shooting the whole thing because that is a different talk right right bm the thing is that the good angle it's not about so much about angles you know of course our angles angle sensitivity is a thing when it comes to specific slides to um Uh, where people are looking at your hands and necessarily need to look so that the magic really can, you know, uh, uh, bust out, burst out. But when it comes for, for um, uh, to, when, when we talk about techniques where, 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 we, where we're getting ahead of our audience, like, you know, counting a bunch of cards, stocking a deck, things, uh, we are hiding in plain sight. And we do, do it, we, we, we work mainly with misdirection, right? And with the natural flow of motions. And with the meaning and reason, reason and reason, meaning and reason of, of where the attention of everybody goes, usually following the magician's um, um, attention um, with a split sack of delay. And here goes crazy challenges again. 
knowing a shit ton about history of magic. Super excited. Uh, Pink account was uh, 1937 by Broe2. I researched like a few seconds ago. <laughs> uh, fooled me there. Fooled me there. <laughs> uh, but until Di Vernon republished it, nobody had heard of it since Frederick published it in Hugart's magazine, which not many people read. Yeah, okay, really. That's interesting. That's interesting. But today, like, um, like the spread call, we're 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 working our way to the spread call into Mexican turnover, and that's all we do for today. And then we're done. Um, it is out there if you if you're looking for it, but it won't be it won't be suggested by the algorithm. And no, no, <laughs> you need to look for it, but then you can find it. As a matter of fact, I was looking up what's out there on the spread call, and um, I've, this this is uh, 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 mainly presented as a control, as a card control here on on the YouTube, and all the um, uh, uh, um, usual sub su suspects did a um, um, tutorial on it um, to to my. Uh, Uh, and I'm and the great of Marius is not uh, satisfied with what uh, is out there on YouTube. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit. Um, uh, not that the colleagues and not that uh, there are not ex ex incredible sleight of hand um, performances of the specific technique out there, but yet, um, in my uh, general, uh, in my humble opinion, it is quite over thought. Don't overthink things. Uh, there's people improving the slides by trying to hide things that are from a layman's perspective no business to hide no it's not there so uh, uh, so all the variations you could you could find I would um, I would really go down to the to, to the purest version available however uh, it is it is a challenge we're going to talk about this in a second yeah this is why expert card technique is amazing so many heightened things that uh, clearly had an impact and in, uh, in technique which are now seen as basic uh, by the way thank you for pronouncing my name correctly Mur murshid yeah is that correct um uh that is just by accident i i i just given i just you know read what i can read and if it's not right uh, by the way you know you guys gotta live with it <laughs> by the way my name i i pronounce my name because of marius like that because um i believe um miss mac pronounced it like that and i never you know i never thought about um it is it would be uh ver pronounced very differently in german probably and i like it like this of marius uh, <laughs> it's It's pr names. You know, we we are here a connected uh, uh, um, circle of people um, from all over the globe, and you know, speaking the uh, the, the lingua franca English um, uh, to communicate. But uh, but what the hell? There's uh, so many um, dialects, languages. Uh, I I I barely speak too. I hardly speak to Aaron J said it's a uh, funny as topic working on thumb count now also Larry Janik snap double yeah um, with the snap double it's the same thing uh, with the double uh, double lift double term pure purity is key purity is key that is that is where you guys should be heading for yeah that's correct um, mercy all right that's I'm, ha I'm happy I'm happy that I pronounced your name right. So let's go back to the card table here in a second. I got to turn the camera on again. We are currently in for one hour, 40 minutes and um, 14 people watching. Um, let me very briefly now, and then we we uh, talk about the about the, uh, the Mexican turnover, which could have been also put into the chapter of... Um, uh, of the card changes. I'm just going to briefly, you know, uh, into the mechanics here. Let's um, switch the King of Hearts for the Ace of Spades. Right there. So what you have is, yeah, you have a card out there. You take another card and you clip this and this time between thumb and index finger with your, uh, with your second finger here. Right there, right? So when you come 
you take your you you have to hold the cards in a uh, in a little, little mechanic script or dealer script to turn around and contact here at the lower edge of the card as you slide with the other card in the, underneath but you keep a little jog there come in turn it over you repeat the motion like that but the next time what you do as you can see in no, a way I got to give you the other uh, other camera here which you see you can you can reach with the with the index finger underneath the card when you have this little gap here let me see Th there is my dude you see that you can come under there now instead of turning this card over the top card i'm turning this card the lower card over with my index finger so i'm in this position and all i do is I switch the thumb here so bang and i change the card from the king to the ace and then you can repeat the motion <laughs> now as you can see this is a little bit timing you need to have to you need to play around with this a little bit to get the right timing between the two cards so you don't want to fall them to you want don't want to turn you don't want them to turn over too fast um, but you'd also don't want and you don't want to do that that would be stupid <laughs> right so just like that once twice three times change and then you and I'm not satisfied with my performance of this because um, I am um, I don't um, I don't have it a hundred percent under control and I'm, I, f I, I notice because I feel right now that all the the power comes from my arm over my shoulder so I feel the back of my neck stressing out this comes purely out of the wrist it needs to come really out of the wrist probably when you want to do this make this look real good so once twice one what <laughs> see that once twice once twice and that's just now going into a little practice here practice routine this is how it works and you got to work this out to make this look for yourself now when you want to perform this as a trick you want at the point where you change the cards take this card and place it back here and go into this motion and show it like this get rid of this card right so you go so you usually would go like look we got this one card here and this is oh wait this is what's supposed to be in, uh, and they fucked it up again you know this is one of those things it needs to go in a nice flow so card lies out oh it's not the ace of uh, and i fucked it up again but that's practice right so i'm here so one two three and already you see i've been practicing with a little bit with a pattern here and i, w I was just now in my imagine in my um, in my brains i was like um um playing the little game with myself that this was supposed to be the ace and i would go like look i got the ace oh no it's not the ace of damn it the ace and there it goes so a little pa pattern improvising a little pattern here saying that oh it's the king or maybe i go like this i say the ace it's weird maybe i make the ace go disappear and this is supposed to be the ace so i go like look ah oh, wonderful we got the ace here and um the ace um doesn't change because i'm just not getting it with the pattern here so get the ace on the table and i say look wonderful the ace you know now what i mean when i say i don't really got it at my fingertips um i i, I managed to do this uh three times out of ten in a flow where where i just get my brain going to say something related to it and that is that needs a lot of work although occasionally I go to this i feel kind and i feel confident confident about it and then it um it works right now now i just made a couple of it work but this one didn't work and the key is the key is this motion here this motion where you can you need to find the right balance to turn it over with the index finger and at the same time picking the other card up that is the problem I'm, I'm having here right now. I'm getting now there with a little practice. You see what practice is? It's there. You go. We get, I'm getting there now. I'm just. This is now working down the mechanics, repeating the same motion once and once and once again. Yeah. 
Wonderful, wonderful little move. One thing I just want to mention about it is that this is something that I don't really consider as um, as something to fly with seriously. If you get away with it, if it fools people, it's very strong. It impresses people. But since there is another card um, evolved, even people catch tend to catch up on it. And I, um, I tend to use this to level my audience up in a way. Sometimes if it works, you know, I kind of say, you sure? And then uh, the people are, what well, did you do that? It's just, you know, it's uh, just a card that changes all the time. When I, when I turn it over, I, you know, even do it uh, two times or three times in a row. And then to get some of the audience go like, oh, yeah, oh, wow, that. So I, I don't lose because I'm... Uh, uh, I'm performing something from a layman's perspective, incredibly skillful. Um, but uh, but I also get, get give my lay, the layman a chance, like to feel a little bit, you know, catching up on. Because uh, as I said uh, before in the stream, I like to be punchy. So um, sometimes I tend to just, you know, hit them too hard with with with, with strong visual effects. Because also I'm a child of my time, you know, <laughs> and, um, and and this is never a good thing, you know. Um, uh, never g get your audience into the you know feeling dumb because or, or feeling th that you to do that you underestimate them or that you don't care about them. That is that's never a good thing. And so, a little thing, a little bit playful thing like this always helps. However. And this is also something, now this is more oh, the philosophy of a slide. It's like this is also a little bit of displaying, you know, cleverness with the fingers. It's a little bit cocky. Uh, it's a little bit bold. It's a gambly kind of situation. So, um, uh, and that's why I never that, that's why I never attempt this like super seriously like I'm going to show you a trick like now. So this is more like, look, uh, here's the king or I like to play like this i've got the ace here wow the ace has been found and, and then i do it with misdirection even i don't care about the visual effect it's like like since we have the ace established on the table and, <gasps> where's the ace in something like this people enjoy it very much and then they you know i just you know i hand it over to them that i just changed the cards on the table because they see me they see a card going down and I turn it over, and when I turn it over again, and I come back, and I'm surprised that uh, that the card has changed. Um, uh, they their brains them automatically. It's like you know, they, they, he just very quickly changed the cards, and so again, I'm winning uh, because I'm doing something quality. But they, you know, I I give them something in that behalf, and I enjoy it with a little joke, just for you guys for free. Give it a try, embed this into your own uh, things. Um, you can do this. Also, just like this other, like the um, um, emergency, what what was it called? The emergency um, card stabbing, the emergency card stabbing. It's something you can um, add in there in the mix anytime you like, and it's it's lovely. It's just just very lovely. Um, going back. Before we finally apply some pressure, apply some pressure, and we're going to talk a little bit about the um, spread car and why it's such a hellish um, move. So, um, yeah, you've got a nice rhythm when it hits. Uh, I've never put any work into it since it always feels like they are burning your hands while you do it. Yes, of course, they're burning your hands while you do it. Yes, of course. But and they, at this point, this is one of these techniques, you go down and you turn the card over. And that is that itself is the intention of it to look at it. What is the card? So why wouldn't they look at it, you know? So this is not something, this is where you want to look at them and you want to make the change. And there's, if, I would roughly say from a group of five, three people go like, nah, you just change the cards, you know? So if you play the serially, seriously, it's not funny, but if you, if you give it to them, they go like, <laughs> nice move, mate. Thank you so much. Um, that at least that's my thinking. That's my thought process. Maybe it works completely different uh, uh, for you. You know, once again, we uh, we talked about presentation and p uh, performance characters. You know, 
not every character you know, uh, uh, or let's put it, different characters um, use different slides uh, um, uh, sometimes extremely uh, in an extreme different manner right also this is this is just uh, it's just logical Mushid uh, Islam says I, it can work in three card Monte where there are already two other cards on the table on of those two cards can be used to do the turnover that is that's correct that that's something it's a nice thing to um to um uh, uh, uh to pep up the three card Monty by the way three card Monty just like oil and water something um on my list to not that I don't know it but um where say I want to really study I want to just find my ab absolute version to the, for this one and on the list too this is all I'm already you know looking at next year as as far as as uh, uh, as we make it to next year. <laughs> Uh, Arthur has got Royal Road to Card Magic. But I want, what, 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 and Arthur said, I'm a beginner from Mexico. This book is good for a start. Is this book is good for a start? Um, go to Royal Road to Card Magic. Yes. Dallas Taylor, hello, Arthur. I'm too beginner and feel this book's difficult level is quite high. Are we talking about um, expert card technique? Yes. This is, the, the, the level is very high, and I try it here every, every you know, uh, um, chapter to, to digest it to break it down so that everybody gets something out of it um, if you're a beginner start with the Royal Road to Card Magic and we got a whole life series up and running on this channel last year we did the Royal Road to Card Magic chapter by chapter this is going to be a blast you're going to learn a lot in a very short period of time and you can still join the live sessions here on YouTube on the expert card technique and you will have a blast of time and you will um, get started with magic like only few did few generations before you also because most of the magicians they only had the books <laughs> <sighs> okay so um dallas taylor already um cleared that i see it now in the chat thanks dallas um, but these streams on expert cutting are still valuable. Listen to beginner. Yeah. So um, actually, I just said what uh, Dallas also wrote in behalf, and maybe you become um, the new um, chief secretary of the company of Marius Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Leave smiles is in the house now. Also, hey, do you have a favorite four ace routine? Mm, I don't know. There's so many. So um, now to the the most and um and most important we are almost two hours in now um slide the 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 spread call as i said at the beginning it's one of those things i walk by i know it's important i never really mastered it i know the the general mechanics um it is a technique that is useful for stocking for controlling cards for even for forcing cards and it is extremely difficult for one reason because it all happens at the moment where you spread cards right and that was just normal norm this is when i i'm looking for the joker right now okay i'm i'm, I'm looking for the joker right now like there that's the motion in that motion it happens and because it is a motion that is very natural and um, very, you know, while I'm going through the cards, I need to put the slide in there without any interruption of the motion. So with the culling of the card, with the culling of several cards even, I need to come out as a result with this motion. And if you don't make it, it sucks. That's what's that's difficult. Now, when you use it for stocking, you will find yourself in a performance situation where your attention goes to the cards because you're looking for something and you can talk, you, you, you can talk whatever you want while you do this to keep it entertained. Everybody will look at you in a waiting position 
And that is a weak spot in every performance situation. Okay, now he's looking for the queens, for the whatever, he's looking for something. He's not with us right now. This is when people light up a cigarette, order another drink, um, or they just, you know, careless, they're just looking at you. Um, very casual. And that is the most difficult mindset you can have. If you do not have the attention of your unload, if you are not connected with them, um, which means you're controlling them, just like the media, you know, like television and radio and YouTube, you know, the more you connect it, the more information you get, the more you can manipulate, you can fill the heads with um, um, the premises and uh, with the uh, um, f ideas and with the story and with the narration. And with the narration comes questions, emotions, and you get them. But as soon as you are in this position, you're going like, I'm, I'm right now, sorry, I just need to go for the jacks. They, their brains go free and they're looking. And that's when they see things sharp as eagle, right? That's when they see. So when you're in this situation and you're going like, <laughs> you can just as well do, do the classic one. Wait, I just, you know, put the cards behind my back. It's not, it's nothing happening here. It's just the cards behind my back. And, and uh, now do you want a seat trick? That's the level where you're performing at, you know? And now I just drop the cards at the, on the floor. My, my beloved seconds. I'm not picking them up right now. It's annoying. Just that you notice. Um, so this why this is difficult and kind of dangerous. Now, that is the use case scenario we got in the book here. And um, the mechanics of this are extremely confusing. So what um, I do is that I basically, and I'm, I'm just um, trying to figure out the problem here, that I, any card, let's say the jack, I place my thumb upon there, I place the six to the right underneath, I'm culling that to the right with my fingers, and I pull the, the jack to the left to push the jack then up to the top as I do the whole thing. That is how we are dealing with the situation in the book on page 129, an expert card technique. In order to bring any stock, whatever you want, the four aces, to the bottom of the deck in this situation, you're looking for the joker. Now you got it, and then you control it to the top by, um, right, you catch it, you catch a break, um, and then you shuffle them to the top with the break. That's how they put it, how they describe it in the book. Now, the spread cow, however, is very often used as a um, card control, like in different versions where you have a spectator select a card and then you just um, bring them all together and thus controlling the card to the bottom of the deck. Now, you can also use it this way to control several cards to the top of the deck with your fingers by curling the card inwards. And there are different versions of it out there. And I believe it will, it's a, uh, Salomon, Salomon, Dave Salomon. Where you where you use a slider card, where you where you slide any card basically, or just the first card you need. And this one is the one you use, like this, to slide any card you wanna um, bring up there right on top of there and the rest goes down there. Now you can clearly see this. And if you type in spread curl, a spread curl
control, you will find a ton of tutorials. Apply, Apply some, some pressure. pressure. Right. And um, I would recommend you guys watch them all. And you will, you will, first of thing is that you will find, you will find many different um, performances of different skill levels, different satisfied, you know, very different. Uh, uh, I was very unsatisfied with some, and I was really kind of also almost shocked how well it worked in the hands of some others. And we are in a situation here where a clean performance, a super, you know, smooth, not flashy performance is almost not, um, um, not leading, not guiding to, 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 uh, to the satisfying, um, results here. Because remember, we are in this situation of spreading through the cards and that's, you know, kind of has turned into something very clean. There's these, there are these uh, very clean card shops or mechanics there um, who have this, who, or there's even a version where you, where you throw it up. It's really nice where you bring it up and it's out jogged the card. And when you turn it down, right, um, you uh, don't do something like this, but uh, basically you uh, keep the card out there. And then you bring it in and still you got a control on, on, on the bottom. But you see the main difficulty for all the different versions out there is to get a card, to get the card pulled in, right? Let me show you this from the down, downside. So we are in a situation like this right now here. And now I'm, I'm com coming up here and I cheat to pull the card in. And I have already some ideas of how to get this really working, how to make this, you know, but I am still thinking about it. Now, this is the first thing that needs to go down flawlessly, this uh, curling in of the cart, the first thing underneath, but then the second thing is that this needs to happen pretty much at the same time where when you perform it like this, you close in all the other cards, because if I use it, would you want to use it as a control? I would be in this situation. I close it and then I just would close it naturally. Right. And everything else is data. So when I do this, I would need to be able to call it underneath and add in the same moment where I put it in. And that is the, 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 the brain breaking, the synopsis breaking, pro moving, moving, pulling, pushing at the same time. This is what gives me where I've, oh my God, what is happening in my brain, right? And then if you use another one of those versions where you keep on pushing with your thumb there, you have the same issue where you um, need to come put, put curl the card inwards. And I'm exaggerating this here that you can see this at the same time where you keep on pushing with your thumb. So you have the same kind of problem where you, um, where you do this contrary motions with both hands. And this is, I believe the first hurdle to jump over in order to get this really smooth. The objective once again is that no matter in what motion you go, if you put embed it into this motion or if you, or if you embed it in the motion where you spread it uh, more evenly like this to have a spectator, uh, select a card like that. Oh, the ace of spades. <laughs> I'm, I'm better than I think I am sometimes, you know, and at the point here, the, the yeah, now I, you see what I'm doing. You see it here flashing. That's what I'm doing. This is the curling inside and I'm doing the must do this pretty much at the same time where I push it in. And this is a, this is, a, I just said, I admit it. I've, 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 I, that's how far I figured it out. This is what, I, that's the nut to crack here. That's the nut to crack to get it. But if you, but, but, but this is definitely, and, um, where I say this is such a, this is such a powerful technique because when you get it down, that this, 
it's better than the past, isn't it? It's better than the past. It's just freaking. It's just freaking powerful. I'm closing the book, kids. We're 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 getting to an end here. We're getting to an end. I hope you're not disappointed that I can't show you a, a couldn't show you a um um a per perfect performance of this. Just uh uh. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just there. I'm just with you guys on there. And I would really, I would really love us um, tackling this together on our Discord channel. Um, everybody kind of, you know, gets into the sucker right now. And wherever you make kind of a progress, you know, you or you just let us know. You just um, uh, make a recording, and then we talk about it. Because this is like when you keep on, you know, you keep on thinking on the thing. You keep on practice on the on the thing. This is just much. Um, more satisfying practice um, uh, um, uh, uh, and learning process than than just being alone with it for 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 years and years and years. Um, yeah. So what's up in the comments? Let's see. Apply some pressure. Um, we have. Uh, and when they are looking, whenever I get them motivated to practice the standard version, I watch. Kostya Kimmel's fullest performance where he does the cl cleanest triumph ever with the, under the spread card. Does he? Yes. Uh, uh, um, I, I'm not watching. I'm not watching. Um, uh, I know I'm missing something, but I'm, 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 I'm not watching. Uh, Fulas. Um, I love the Roadrunner call. It flows very well. Rhythm is key. That's true. Rhythm is key. It needs to be super smooth, flawless. Uh, there is no, there is, there's no, um, that's the, ch that's the, the problem about it. And there's, the, the, uh, the, the, there's no, there's no excuses at this point. Uh, you can't hide with misdirection. <laughs> you can't hide with stupid jokes. You can't just point into the skies. Uh, and make them look away for a second that you need, you know? <laughs> and just after three months of practice, I can call multiple cards or set up for the next routine. That's amazing. Um, Naira Smith, please, um, sh um, if you can, if you want to, of course, you know, because uh, um, that's, uh, that's yours now. You've learned it after three months, practicing multiple cards, set up for the next routine. If you want to share this great wisdom with us, I would really appreciate it on Discord. That would be really, really amazing. Uh, normally, I use it for a routine where I need to memorize the deck. Or say, oh, oh, wow, you shuffled these very well. Also bullshit, but allows you to control one or two cards. Yes, yes, of course. Cheer up, I work on it. It's not the easiest way of slide of fan. No. Um, for me, I believe the, the key now, the, the first thing is that I'm going to get the, 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 the grabbing in there so that I have a really satisfying. And I believe it is, it's, I'm not sure which finger to use best. Um, the index needs to stay in position. They needs to be here and balancing it, and it needs to be just the two, maybe the two fingers. But where do I pull the card? This is then also absolutely relevant. Just just where I pull the card, right? And then this is the first thing that needs to be needs to be mastered. And then of course, probably the easiest thing is like just to keep on to keep to to curl and to keep on um, running while you curl, maybe something like this. When I, I curl and I keep on running, I curl and I keep on running. Gotta see, gotta see what, how, how I work this. Um, and then um, next thing is to get the, the culling, the culling and the pushing together, which I just can't do right now. My brain is not working it. So I'm going, nah, you gotta just, you know, kick, kick your brains in there. <laughs> this is going to be the thumbnail. Um, yeah, amazing! I'm excited to get to get um to get this finally on my working table. Just there it is, you know. After after a long time of um, false deals and um, all all the all the palming and 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 stealing and uh, controlling with the diagonal palm shift, which I prioritized over mo over a lot of other things. Um, I work on it. Uh, no, I would recommend something called the uh, convincing control. Uh, 
Leaf Smile Strike. She rubs it works very well because when you want to call four cards out of the deck, it's uh, for me very difficult. Yes, yes, yes. Work the muscles method will deve develop. Yes, yes, that's right. That's usually the, the marching route for a new slide. Smart comment. Knight Strike Camera. Crazy Channel sounds like a planned group project on Discord. Sounds awesome. Yes, count me in. Dallas says, sounds really good. I'm just uh, a bit in intimidated by the card. I'm, me too, honestly. This is, I'm telling you, but here's the thing. That's why I'm quite honest here um, with, uh, with my skill level at this point. <coughs> that is just, it always comes along the way. Don't be intimidated by this. Um, it is an absolutely fun. It's a, this is a technique. Um, yeah, you don't need to know, you know, there's so many, but if you, that this is one of the techniques you need to know for the next, for the, for the next, uh, Getting into the into into the other arena, you know, the one where where where, where they're not shooting with paintballs, you know, the one where the real bullets fly. <laughs> That's a weird analogy. I don't know where that come from. I've been watching. I have been watching too much um, um, thing, t uh, thing, tell it um, serious. Um, preacher. I just watched preacher. I binge watched. Preacher, my brain is not really functioning anymore. If you guys know the series, it, I, it's it was completely bananas. I don't know what I watched there. It's great. Everybody dies in the end, and 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 you go to the, oh, I, it's good. But I mean everybody. I mean everybody. It's great. It's great. So. Beloved subscribers, before I spoil another uh, TV series for you here, <laughs> merciless as I am, I thank you so much for the great time we had here together once again. Thank the, to the odd maniacs who make it happen with a pledge on Patreon. You guys are rocking awesome. Currently, seven legend, 17 legends bring together almost two bricks of seconds. Um, we are going to talk about the ambitious card, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in two weeks. Ambit ambitious card. The, I, 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 I believe my workload will uh, uh, be uh, lower for the next two weeks. And I'm trying... And I'm trying to uh, to to, to uh, shoot as much tutorials and videos I want to. I have planned in the time as possible, so that the, the, that 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 stuff is coming at you. She Rob wonders now about the manic sessions. What the fuck? What, what's the problem? Sounds really good. I'm just uh, intimidated by the call. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the live stream. Yeah, crazy challenges. It was a blast. We had uh, we had all the crazy the crazy we can I have. I hope it was uh, productive. I hope you got from this uh, session uh, what you came for. Um, um, I had a place of a time. Um, I was super exhausted now. Drinking tea. Um, we'll be wiping a little bit and then hitting the the matrazzi, going for a little nappy nap because it is twenty. It's ten thirty. PM here in Berlin. Now you know the drill. You keep on practicing, and you practice well, and it will come to you. And um, in the meantime, you can rest assured that more magical stuff, more magical stuff. Wait, wait, let's do this properly. And in the meantime, you can rest assured more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Odd Mario's magic. I can subscribe. This is the lamest outro music I ever played. Good night. Good night.